Hi guys, uh, good morning to all. I think it's good time to start. We welcome you to the webinar on Azure Network Manager. Myself Shaitali, your host for today's Emerging Technology webinar. So let's start with the webinar intro. Before that, let me introduce you all to our today's event sponsor, Synergetics. Synergetics Learning is India's most distinguished learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our top class uh, learning solutions as well as the that that can be fit with every requirement, I guess. In every sector ev across the every industry. Around the globe, our expensive greenfield solution includes the onboarding solution, as you can see on the screen, the reskilling certification, certification plus add on cloud adoption, architecting, practice playbook, latest technology training, emerging technology training and content development. Today's webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all who are interested in emerging technologies. You just need to follow our meetup group which is an emerging technology community for all. You just need to install the meetup app on your phone so we will you will get the updates from our site on our events, meetups, webinars and workshops. Now small code of conduct which you all need to follow guys. Please note you all not allowed to take a screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. Just uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post the recordings and videos over there. The link will be provided to you in the chat box so you can go go and subscribe to our channel. Agenda for the session as you can see on the screen. The agenda for today's webinar. Go ahead. Today's speaker for the session is Mr. Uh, Sham Talke. He is working as a team lead in Synergetics Cloud Delivery Department. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Chaitali, for the small Thank introduction. You. So, the, guys, uh, yeah. just, just let me complete, then you can okay, go okay. ahead with that. Okay, okay. okay Thank okay. you. Now, the upcoming uh, upcoming certification uh, session is on PL900. The, the, this is the certification webinar. It will be a uh, two two half a day sessions. Timing are already mentioned and the registration link will be provided to you. Also, the uh, AZ 204 certification webinar uh, uh, will be conducted on 5th of November. It will be full day session. You can register to the link which will be provided to you in the chat box. Do also do follow us on our social media platforms to get the updates regarding to the webinars and workshops which we conduct. Now I'd like to hand over the mic to Sham sir. Uh, Sham sir, you can go ahead with the session. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitali. So guys, my name is Sham Talke. I work as a team lead in the cloud delivery solutions. I have 10 plus years of industry IT industry experience. And today I am going to uh, give you a session about Azure Virtual Network Manager. So let me take a control of screen. You guys can see it. Yes, yes, your screen is visible. OK. So let's uh, set the agenda for the uh, session today. Very, st uh, very first, we will start with the knowing the networking term and then move towards virtual network. After that, we will discuss virtual network challenges and then move forward to knowing the Azure Virtual Network Manager. What are all benefits it offers? Then topologies that we can create using Azure Virtual Network Manager. How uh, the functioning of virtual network manager that we will be discussing after topologies. Common use cases 
where we can use the Azure Virtual Network Manager. And most importantly, security admin rules. Finally, we will discuss pricing and move ahead to the hands on labs. So, starting with the term network, uh, you guys must have heard this before as well. Networking is uh, communication between uh, interconnected devices. Okay. So these uh, devices can be uh, your computer networks, your personal computers, uh, servers, networking hardware, or other specialized or general purpose hosts. Now, in order to establish this connectivity or community, uh, the uh, communication, you have to have certain set of configuration. So every computer or every on every host, you need to assign IP address. Correct. Then that uh, you know to reach to other computer, IP address has to be pointed in that direction. And there also need a firewall or some routing device so that your IP address will get published to other networks. Then we have Azure Virtual Network. Azure Virtual Network, uh, if you are working in your office, you are probably working in on premises, right? And you are into your LAN uh, area. So it's same like LAN in your cloud. <clears throat> Unless you uh, publish uh, any public IP in the cloud, you are always in the private network, right? So Azure Virtual Network is a, rep a representation of your own network in the cloud. It's nothing, nothing but your own private network in the cloud. It is a logical isolation of the Azure cloud dedicated to your subscription. So inside your subscription, you first create a virtual network and deploy your virtual machines or servers inside it. So it's a, it's a logical isolation of your network in the cloud. Now, before talking about Azure Virtual Network, we need to discuss challenges and why we need Azure Virtual Network. Till now, we uh, we are using Azure Virtual Network. We uh, suppose we have multiple uh, regions. Very first challenge, managing those virtual networks across those regions is difficult as they uh, grow. And uh, it becomes complex to manage the topology, right? Then organization level security rule uh, enforcement as scale. You cannot just push any security rule to all the virtual networks that are there. If there are two or a couple of them, then it's easy. But if there are thousands or hundred virtual networks, it's difficult to uh, apply security rules on them. And there always be uh, there always be risk of the vulnerabilities. And then it's also difficult to manage multiple uh, subscriptions. Uh, the virtual networks within multiple subscriptions. And all the challenges are uh, uh, all the all the challenges can be handled in Azure virtual network scenario. So what is Azure Virtual Network? Uh, Azure Virtual Network Manager. I will call it as AV, AVNM uh, going ahead. So um, uh, it's a management service uh, enables you to the uh, to group, configure, deploy, and manage virtual networks globally and across subscriptions. So you can manage vir uh, virtual networks that are spanned across that are spanned across uh, multiple regions and uh, multiple subscriptions. It helps you. Uh, it helps to identify and logically segment your virtual networks. Now, using Azure Virtual Network Manager, you can simply uh, you can create your topology like Mesh or Hub and Spoke. Further, it uh, it helps to determine the connectivity and security configuration you want and apply them across all the selected virtual networks. AVNM gives you an option to define your connectivity configuration. 
like how you want to connect your virtual networks to each other. You can either connect them with the mesh topology or you can connect, uh, connect to them with hub and spoke model. Let's know the let's uh, get to the key benefits of AVNM. So centrally managed connectivity and security policies globally across regions and subscriptions. When you create AVNM, you will have option to manage your security policies and apply them to your virtual networks, irrespective of their location or subscription. Enables direct connectivity between spokes in the hub and spoke configuration without the complexity of managing a mesh network. Like I said, it gives, uh, it gives you an option to create hub and spoke topology. It's highly scalable and highly available service with redundancy and replication across the globe. Since this is a service instance and managed by Azure in the backend, it's highly scalable, highly available, and have enough redundancy. It has ability to create network security rules that override net network security group rules. Now, this is one important point. You always have precedence to your network security group when you push admin rules from your AVNM. Low latency and high, high bandwidth between resources in different virtual networks using virtual network peering. Since it's a backend managed service by Azure, you will always get uh, maximum bandwidth and hence you will have low latency. Roll out network changes through a specific region, sequence, and frequency of your choosing. You can test your configuration on one single region and then roll out the changes to other regions. So uh, impact would be minimal. Now talking about topology, as I said, uh, AVNM gives you an option to create a topology. So very first, mesh topology, as you can see in the diagram, there are six virtual networks, right? So one network, uh, these dot dot lines are showing that they, they can talk to each other in this mesh. And they their communication is bi-directional. Okay, and uh, AVNM also gives us option to enable global mesh if they are residing in multiple regions. Now there is one more construct that is called connected group, which will help you to bind multiple uh, these virtual networks and publish their uh, address space to uh, network interfaces at the ground level. Then we have another topology that is hub and spoke topology. In hub and spoke topology, you mainly have one virtual network in the central location and child virtual networks at the other location. This can be a scenario like one head office and branch offices. Right? And to the head office, branch offices are connected. And they can communicate bidirectionally. OK? So hub and spoke is a network topology in which you have a virtual network selected as the hub virtual network. In this case, this middle one. This virtual network gets bidirectionally paired with every spoke a virtual network in the configuration. In generic scenario, you will always have bidirectional communication with your child uh, virtual network or spoke virtual network. AVNM gives you option to enable direct connectivity between spoke virtual networks. Correct. So these dot dot lines are showing that these all child resources or child virtual networks have connectivity between them. They can always talk to each other. So by default, there uh, there are two main topologies, uh, mesh and hub and spoke in the IVNM. And there is a third one with the direct connectivity. OK. So with direct connectivity, your spokes can communicate to each other. And you will also have global mesh 
uh, in this as well. Well, you you will always uh, you always can use this global mesh feature to communicate to virtual networks residing in different regions. Security rules precedence. Security rules will always take precedence over your energy rules. So if you deploy a virtual machine, you will always have to uh, uh, bind energy as a security measure and you uh, you must be uh, controlling traffic and access through energy rule but if you have admin rules your admin rules will always take precedence over energy rules suppose you have 3389 allowed in admin rules it will be allowed here as well now there are there are different types of uh, access we will discuss this in the next slide wherein uh, your traffic will be terminated on the first stage itself. We will discuss this in the next slide. Now, how AVNM works? There are some components of AVNM. If you talk about uh, subscriptions, we have management group, which handles multiple subscriptions. Management group is nothing but the, uh, uh, it's a group of subscription which will give you uh, security, common security dashboard and cost, uh, cost dashboard for all the subscriptions. So you can apply this AVNM on the management group or at the subscription level group. Now inside manage in this diagram, inside management groups, there are two sub management groups. Inside each of those sub management groups, there are, two, uh, there are multiple subscriptions or there can be a subscription. Underneath subscription, we have multiple virtual networks. So AVNM works uh, with the components of its network group. We have to create network group in AVNM. Now network group will have membership wherein we need to specify these virtual networks as their members. Now this membership is two types. Uh, one is static. You can manually add uh, virtual networks to network group. Other one is dynamic. They will be automatically added. After you configure network group, you will need to uh, create connectivity configuration or security configuration. So connectivity configuration will give you option to create topology mesh or hub and spoke. Security configuration will have admin rules in it. So you create security configuration, specify admin rules and push it. And connected group, this is a factor of uh, mesh topology. This will be published at the end network interfaces. I'll show that in the practical. So let's deep dive into uh, detail of these components. Network group is uh, used to segment your network into dev, prod, or test, like based on your environment or by team. On the name of team, you can create network group. So this group, uh, group your uh, VNets at subscription management group or tenant level. You can also uh, group them at the subscription level, management level, or tenant level. Static grouping, you can add virtual networks manually by selecting them one by one. Or dynamic grouping, so dynamic grouping is nothing but using your Azure policy. So in Azure policy, you will have default editor with some categories specified uh, uh, in the GUI. And in JSON editor, you can do advanced level configuration. Connectivity configuration. Create different virtual network topologies with a few clicks. So in first, uh, in the first diagram, you can see hub and spoke topology, wherein you have one centralized virtual network 
another child virtual networks or spoke virtual networks. Second mesh. All the virtual network can communicate to each other. Bidirectionally. Hub and spoke with uh, direct connectivity. You have hub and spoke in place. Additionally, if you want to connect uh, spoke networks to each other, we'll always have that option. Now, security configuration. When you create security configuration, that means you would need to require uh, you would, you would need to apply admin rules. So who will use this security configuration? Network admins who are managing networks, central government governance team who uh, who publishes the security rules or uh, set the set particular boundaries of security rules. Admin rules applied to all resources in desired network group. So in this diagram also we can see the order of the uh, network rules. So there is this computer that is shown at the computer interface. We have energy option to add energy. Then there is this subnet. Subnet level also we have energy. And at the last we have admin rules which is pushed through AVNM. So what are the common use cases of AVNM? Mesh topology, you can create mesh topology of your existing virtual networks so that they can communicate to each other. Hub and spoke model, if uh, suppose you have shared services located on your hub virtual network and you now want to uh, connect to uh, connect to your hub, the rest of the virtual networks so that they can utilize the shared services. Hub and spoke topology with direct connectivity. In case you want to directly connect your spokes. And you can always maintain and manage your virtual network topology using AVNM. And most uh, important security. Suppose you want to control some security policies from centralized location. You have AVNM as an option. Now, why we need security admin? Before we understand that, we need we first need to understand what are the traditional approaches. Correct. So, scenario one: energies are managed by central governance team. They can impose essential security rules through energy, but operation overhead is high as the administrators need to manage each energy. When the number of energy grows, it becomes a burden. You can enforce this essential security rules, but it is difficult to manage each and every energy network security group as they grow. Scenario two, energies are managed by individual teams. It is flexible for individual teams to control their security rules to tailor their need. On the other hand, they cannot impose critical security rules. Example, risky ports could be wide open. Suppose you have production team in your organization and you have given them the uh, freedom to control their own energy. Now there they will we will provide you some set of uh, rules that you need to always allow block these rules. There is always a risk that they they can accidentally open some uh, ports uh, due to lack of knowledge on security. Suppose they would get a link to open uh, the malicious link wherein they just click and uh, it asks this ask them to put their username and credentials and it will automatically create a hole in that security group. So it's always riskier in scenario two as well. And there is scenario three. Energies are managed by individual teams, but energies are created using Azure policy to have standard rules. This will be your next step if you have multiple energies and it's obvious to 
to make them automated because managing single energy is almost impossible so modifying rules would trigger notification every time a rule is modified you will get an alert and there is still no hard enforcement as energy owners can modify because they have full control they will always modify it and there is no strict enforcement now when you have admin rules through avnm you will have these benefits you can use admin rules to specify to enforce critical security rules as guard guard rules and have limited security vulnerabilities individual teams get flexibility in maintaining their energies because you always have centralized control and push some rules from avnm which will always, uh, which will take the precedence individual users can control the energies administrators don't need to manage all the energies so operational overhead is minimized because the important rules would be controlled from admin rules the energy management overhead is minimized now i was talking about access type of the security rules we have allow always and deny so when you specify allow that means it non terminating what is non terminating your traffic will first hit at the security admin rules and it will be passed to energy rules that means it is not terminating at the security admin rules always allow rule terminating you have always allow rule and since it is always allow it will be terminated here and would not be passed to energy for for the revaluation deny deny is also terminating if you specify deny rule here it will always be denied and will not go ahead to nhc why always allow is terminating so if you specify always allow terminating means it is it will not forward the rule further to nhc for evaluation so if you specify always allow on the security admin rules it will always reach to the destination energy rule will have no control okay thank you the common uses of security rules you can create standard rules that must be applied on a virtual network that are there already existing and newly created virtual networks like for example ip tcp those are some important protocol for communication between the host so you can always create a standard rules by grouping them create security rules that can't be modified and enforce company organization uh, rules and you can have protection to your uh, rules Uh, by preventing users from opening high risk ports even they open their ports if you have deny rule at the admin rule it would not be reached create default rules for everyone in the company organization so that administrator can prevent security threats caused by nsc misconfiguration or forgetting to put any uh, necessary nsc you can also create security boundaries using security admin rules as an administrator and let the owners of the virtual networks configure their energy so the energies won't break company policies your infosec policies would be in place even you give the control control of energy to the uh, energy owners and there is force allow the traffic from uh, uh, force allow the traffic from and to critical services so that others 
other users can't accidentally block the necessary traffic such as program updates. Since you have always allow rule, we'll always allow the traffic to program updates. Even the end user blocks it at the energy, it will not be blocked. So finally, there is pricing. There is no upfront cost for using AVNM. And there is no cancellation fee. You can always pay for what you use. And this pricing is 0 0.10 per hour per subscription managed. So we have the labs, the hands-on labs that we are, I'm going to show you how to create virtual network manager. Then virtual networks. And define networking group. Add your virtual networks as members of their uh, networking group. Then define those membership. Dynamically add the virtual networks. I'm going to show you how to create mesh topology as well as hub and spoke configuration. And then in the end, I will be pushing the security admin rules. Okay, so let me open to, uh, let me go to Azure portal. So this is my Azure portal and uh, I have three different subscriptions, management subscriptions, identity subscription, connectivity subscription. And if you look at the region, one is in Australia East, one is in Central India, one is in East US. Now let's create a hub and spoke topology of these three network of these three virtual machines. Now ensure you do not conflict your IP addresses with each other. Okay. So I am going to turn on this virtual machines. And let's go to virtual network manager. Click on create network manager. And this service is in preview. You can see it here. You do not have any SLA as of now. And this is not recommended to use in production. So I'll give my AVNM a name. AVNM. Demo one. It's okay to have it in East US. It's okay to have it in any region. It can manage all the regions virtual networks. So Azure Virtual Network Manager lets you create groups of networks within the scope you define below and apply configuration based on the features you select. You select your location here for Azure Virtual Network Manager, but you have to select proper location here, uh, here in this scope, so that you can trace your virtual networks. The selected features can be managed by one instance of Azure Virtual Network Manager or by separate instances. However, multiple instances can't overlap one selected scope. For example, two instances of virtual network manager can't manage security for the same management. And it doesn't make sense with it. So let's select the scope. I have my three virtual machines. Uh, virtual machines again.
So I have these three virtual machines. One is in management, another is identity, and there's one, one more connectivity subscription. Connectivity, identity, and you can also select your uh, tenant group as a scope. I want to have these two features. I'm going to click them connectivity and security and both. Not thinking of thinking of any tag right now. My virtual machines have started and in running state. Now let's come, uh, connect to them using a tool, SSH tool. I'm using my own tool. You can prefer your. I have these three machines mapped already to my uh, application, this SSH application. It's same like Putty. Let me first log in. Okay, so I have 220, 220 here, 173 here, and 53. This is unnecessary. I'm going to do it. Okay, so I'm connected to three virtual machines. Let's find out their IP address. This is 172.16.0.4. One ninety two, one sixty and zero dot four. Ten dot zero dot zero dot four. And same you can check in the portal as well. One ninety two, one sixty and zero dot four. Ten dot zero dot zero dot four, one seventy two, sixteen, zero dot four. Okay. If I want to ping, I am going to establish hub and spoke topology. So I'm considering this 10.0.04 as my hub and rest of the two in spoke. So if here if I am pinging to my spoke virtual network 192.168.0.4, I'm unable to ping them. If I ping to my 170, uh, the other spoke 172.16.0.4. I cannot ping that as well. And same case from the other side, if I want to ping my hub, 10.0.0.4, not pinging. The other spoke, 10.0.0.4, not pinging. Correct? So right now there is no connectivity between these three virtual machines. Or we can say three virtual, three different virtual networks. They are connected to three different virtual networks. Same you can see here. AVNM, AU, VNet. AVNM, CI, VNet. AVNM, US. 
ओके रीजनल नेम रीजनल रीजन शॉर्ट नेम इज इंक्लूडेड इन इट्स वर्चुअल मशीन नेम और विनेट नेम ओके सो नाउ वी वर क्रिएटिंग एवीएनएम इट इज क्रिएटेड लेट्स गो टू इट एंड वेरी फर्स्ट यू हैव ओवरव्यू वेर इन यू कैन सी करंट सब्सक्रिप्शन इट इज डिप्लॉयड इन कनेक्टिविटी सब्सक्रिप्शन इट्स रिसोर्स ग्रुप इज एवीएनएम यूएसआरजी and current location is east us this is the subscription id for connection connectivity subscription uh we have enabled connectivity and security admin feature for this avenian scope we have defined three uh, scopes uh scope across tenant is null and provisioning state succeeded activity log you can always see the logs of Uh, Azure portal logs here. Suppose you want to see uh, somebody has removed some configuration, you can always check it. I uh, check it here. Access control a IM. This is basically giving permission to access this resource to somebody else. It's still loading. Okay, so you can add. Uh, you can click on add and provide access to someone else, and you can also check current role access permissions in the role assignments. Diagnose and solve problem mostly used for diagnosing your problem related to AVNM. Properties. More detail on your AVNM can be seen in AVN uh, AVNM properties. logs this is one important feature if you want some uh, if you want preventing your uh, other azure users from removing this particular resource you can always put log so that it will be logged for deletion and then the main feature network group these all uh, these all features from overview to logs they are generic features and available for all the resources so this network group is related to our avnm so let's create a network group my avnm ng created to communicate Created to establish communication communication between three between virtual networks. It should appear here. And you can see your network group is created. Member type virtual network group member zero, and description is shown. Let's click. Uh, let's click on network group. So in network group, uh, we have tags, diagnostic, those common features again, properties, log, and here is our first feature. that is group members here you you should see the uh, virtual networks that are member to this network group so there are two options you can manually add them or create azure policy so i will add one in a manual way so i'll add this first one yeah, which is residing in uh, australia east add and there is another way to add a virtual network that is dynamic how would you add dynamic virtual network by specifying the azure policy i am going to create 
an Azure policy. Give a name to your Azure policy. My AVNN. Uh, member ship policy test or test environment. Scope is by default selected to those three subscriptions. And there is this built in feature we are wherein you can specify very various parameters like your name of resources, virtual network name, ID. Tax, subscription name, subscription ID, and other things, right? And we can also have additional option that is JSON editor. You can paste your JSON editor code here and configure it. So right now we will be looking at the example of tax. And before doing this policy, I want to make sure I have a tag. So I'm going to add this another US one dynamically to my network group. So I need to make sure that I have a tag. I'll create a tag for test. Give some value here like app one. And I specify that condition that if tag exists and its name is test. Proceed ahead to make the group member. And by the way, you can additionally specify conditions, more conditions and or or. And specify your resource group name, subscription name, if you want to limit it. Click on save. Now this will take around two to three minutes. Meanwhile, this processes, we will look at other component. You can see the policy is created, policy is created, but number of units are zero. Okay, so let's go back and see the next feature until that gets uh, scanned. So next option is configuration. So you have two types of configuration, connectivity and security. So in connectivity, since we are going to create a hub and spoke uh, topology, we will specify our first connectivity, connectivity configuration. Topology will be hub and spoke. Now, when you specify hub and spoke, you will have to select your hub. So I'm going to choose Central India region as my hub. So AVNM uh, CI dash VNet residing in Central India. That's why I've selected uh, that one. After I select my hub, I'll have to specify spokes. Uh, so spoke network uh, groups, all virtual networks in virtual uh, all virtual networks with network groups that you add are peer to hub. Directly connect direct connectivity creates additional peering between virtual networks within the same network group and region. When direct uh, connectivity is enabled, you can also uh, you can also enable global mesh to create peering within the same group across all regions. Right. So we first add spoke network groups without a direct connectivity. So this is our network group that we created. Next. And create. Configuration created. Connectivity have been spoke. Network group selected one. Group members two. You see group members are two here now. 
looks like our policy is working. So let's go back and see network manager, network groups, uh, and then group members. You see it here? The other one. This one, the AU Australia one is uh, uh, added uh, manually. But this East US is added dynamically to the policy. The same can be seen here. Number of units added to this policy from this subscription is one. OK, so you can always specify tax to your virtual networks. Even you create them newly, you specify the tag and they will be member of this network group. You don't have to go and manually add them. OK, so now uh, let's go to configuration again. And we can see network groups here as well. Right, so we are ready with our uh, connectivity. We just published the configuration. We first created network group, then uh, added our uh, virtual networks inside it. Then in the configuration, we have specified the hub and spoke topology without direct connectivity. So now let's go to this configuration and publish it or commit it. Click on deploy. Target region it is asking. I have one in uh, AU, Australia used. And another one in East US. All right, let's uh, read this. The configuration you deploy represent your overall desired state for your virtual network in your target regions. Azure Virtual Network Manager makes necessary changes to achieve this goal state. So you will always specify your desired state when you are deploying this configuration. It would always be uh, taken as a latest configuration. Your goal state can include one or more configuration types. For each type you include, the configuration you select will overwrite any existing configurations of the same type. Like I said, it will take the latest configuration if you commit. You can remove existing configuration from target regions by deploying a goal state without any configuration selected. We'll see this in the next configuration. OK, so this is the your existing configuration and this will be your goal state, the desired one. This will be pushed and added in the existing one to deploy. Can you please show again how the spokes were selected? Please. In the configuration? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. OK. You have first selected connectivity configuration, given, given it some name. And here you have added the group. Like okay. this way. Okay. okay, we will do this again we, because we will be doing multiple configuration. Okay. So we push the deployment. We pushed hub and connectivity, hub and spoke connectivity between those uh, three uh, virtual machine. Now let's look at their connectivity again. These two are my spoke uh, networks, and this one is my hub, right? So let's start with this one, and this has already started communicating communicating to my hub network. Okay, and this is another one. This also has started the communication. 
Now let's check from hub the vice versa bidirectional traffic. Link 172.16.0.4. And I can ping to my spoke. Let's check on the other spoke. Yeah, I can communicate to other spoke as well. Okay. So now let's check the connectivity connectivity between two spoke. Ping 192.168.0.4. The other spoke. You can see it is not reachable. From the other side, 172.16.0.4. This will not be given. Okay, so right now what we did, we just created a hub and spoke topology out of nowhere. We did not had any connection between those virtual networks. We had this, this, and this in a different regions different subscriptions. And through AVNM, we were able to communicate this. And communicate this. Correct. But we cannot communicate. This one to this one directly or from here to here. From here to here. And we do have that option in our configuration. So let's look at how to establish con uh, connectivity between those two, two spokes. So we'll create a new con uh, configuration here, and it is going to be connectivity configuration. Connectivity config to create spoke. Hub and spoke again. Select your hub. Central India is your hub. Select. And we will add the network group again. OK, so now let's stop here and see what all options are there. So very first you have network group name and then the desired option that we were looking for enable connectivity between network group. That means all the virtual network group, all, jo all the virtual networks in your group can communicate to each other. And enable a uh, global mesh. Because they are uh, uh, residing in separate, separate regions. So review and create. Why was uh, hub as a gateway disabled there? Because uh, if there is a gateway, VPN gateway in your hub, then only you can use that option. Okay. So now we have this latest configuration. Now we want to push it. We just have to click on it and deploy. You already read this. This will be your second connectivity configuration and target region. Australia is. And East US. And I also choose the Central India because I'm connecting, I'm establishing connectivity in all the regions. Okay. Here you can see existing configuration. This was our old one, and this is going to be a new one, and this is going to be added. You can see Central India is blank here. Earlier we did not add it. Newly it is going to add there.
It's taking a little time. Let's check from the virtual machine side. I can see established, the connectivity is already established. This 172.16.0.4 is, is the IP of this book. And this 192.168.0.4 is the IP of this book. Correct. Now they can communicate to any of the virtual machines. Let's say, for example, train. Uh, 192 uh, 0 is already reachable. The other one, 10.0.0.4, which is our hub network, and saying is reachable. From here, saying spoke 172.16.0.4 is reachable already. Let's ping the hub network, 10.0.0.4. This is also pingable. And from the hub, this was working from the beginning, so there should not be a problem. Yes. Okay. So we were able to establish communi uh, communication with hub and spoke model as well as hub and spoke with direct connectivity. Right. This is showing still in progress, but it is already deployed in the background. We can ignore it. Now let's check a security configuration. Create security config. Give it a name. Security config. A. So one. Configuration. To enforce security. High, high priority rules that take precedence over any energy rules and can be used to enforce policies across your network groups. We have uh, we have seen this in our PPT. So this is one important warning here. If this configuration is deployed to virtual networks that contain services using network uh, intent policies like Azure SQL managed instance, it might block traffic that is required for those services to function. So just be careful when you are applying this setting to Azure SQL managed instance. Now there are two options with the uh, uh, for the Azure SQL managed instance: apply all security admin rules to the target virtual networks. Except for those have services using network intent policies. Okay, I'm going to choose this none because this is suitable for me. And now you need to add the rule. So allow what we can allow. Oh, uh, let's let's see the block one of us. Deny. ICMP. ICMP means the ping protocol. You are using this ping protocol to, uh, to test the connectivity to other host. OK, we are, we are going to block it so that we can see the impact. This is my target network group. I'm going to add this rule here. Deny IC empty blocks IC empty traffic priority. I will give it a hundred action. Deny 
now you can see the description here allow traffic uh, uh, allow what allowed does traffic matching this rule will be allowed and deny traffic matching this rule will be blocked and always allow traffic matching this rule will be allowed will be allowed regardless of other rules with over uh, with uh, lower priority or user defined in issue that means if you specify always allow even the uh, port is blocked at the energy it will not have any impact it will always be allowed so it's a kind of terminating and non terminating access type that we saw so i am going to put inbound because i am making inbound connection protocol is icmp here you specify the protocol this is optional source uh, address type destination address type this will be helpful to tighten your security rule as of now i don't need this so my rule is added deny icmp priority 100 direction inbound protocol icmp source source port destination destination ports are blank and action is denied then we go add this next can review all the settings and create okay so this is created so you will have to publish it deploy at this point of time we are still connected right we are still connected to each other now here is uh, there is an option include connectivity configurations in your goal state that means if you want to include earlier configuration you can tick this and i want to do that so connectivity configuration uh, earlier connection uh, connectivity configuration is this one a ben spoke with direct connect target region australia east east us and india central right so this is showing us the existing configuration and desired goal state so we have added additional rule or additional security configuration that it is going to add Let's go to what do we? You see, the connection is dropped now. It's still working, but it should drop. This is already disconnected. Let's check the other way. This is the top. This might take some time, but it is surely going to drop the traffic to the up uh, up virtual network. Okay. so one first in the first we have seen hub and spoke second we have seen hub and spoke with direct connectivity and third we added a rule to block icmp traffic okay now let's look at the virtual machines interface what is happened 
this is one of our spoke virtual network and it has ip address as 192.168.0.4 go to its networking interfaces and route you see you see effective routes here And you're seeing it, two routes are added. One is 10.0.0 slash 24, which is our hub network. And this one is to connect to our spoke network. So if you establish direct connectivity, you will always have connected group. Now let's go to other one. Active routes. You have connectivity to your hub network, which is in 10 series, and you have direct connectivity to your spoke network, which is in 192.168.0.0. Okay. So this is the direct connectivity is established to connected group. Now in uh, spoke in a hub and uh, spoke topology, we'll have pairing established. So let me take you to the virtual network. You see it's connected here and the uh, pairing is added. Here as well, you, you should see the same thing. Pairing, added, a pairing is added to Central India. This is to hub and not to spoke. And in here, in the hub, hub virtual machine, go to virtual network and see the pairing. You should see two pairings. One is to one spoke, other one to the next one. OK. So I think that's it for now. We can have a tea break and then we will come back to how to create a network with a virtual machine and use PowerShell to create a virtual network manager. Let's have a 20 minutes break. OK.
Hey guys, welcome back. So if everybody is in, please raise your hand. Okay, let's wait a couple of minutes more because I see a lot of members absent. Okay, let's start. Uh, I'm sharing my screen again. So before going on the break, we have seen that one host was talking to the hub network and uh, <clears throat> hub network was not talking to. This is one spoke, another one, one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot four. Okay, hub was unable to talk to them, but spokes were able to communicate to hub. Now, why this behavior? They they would not talk to each other. If you if you see, one ninety two one sixty eight zero dot four, they should not talk to each other. Because ICMP is blocked between them. 172 16 bar 0 bar 4. Right? Let's go to the diagram that I presented earlier. So we have added two virtual network groups. Uh, two virtual network as a member to our group. These two. Correct? One is static, another one was dynamically added. But this one was not added. That's why traffic coming towards traffic coming towards this is always uh, is open because there is no uh, blocker, right? So these two hosts, these two spokes, were able to communicate to this hub. But in other way, uh, in bidirectional uh, way, if this hub wants to communicate to these two spoke, traffic is blocked. And this is an expected behavior because you have this and this in your uh, up here. You have this one and this one in your AVNM network group and inbound traffic towards this two fork uh, two spoke is blocked so traffic coming to this on this spoke is allowed but from hub to your spoke was blocked Right, because inbound traffic is blocked on the hook. Okay, and traffic between these two spoke is also blocked because they are blocked by admin rules. Yeah. So let's go back to manual portal. Now, what we are going to do, we are, we will be creating a new. Uh, mesh topology wherein 
uh, all the virtual machines should communicate to each of them. Okay, but before that, I'll show you how, how to add a virtual machine. We'll be adding one more. So go to let's uh, say from beginning. Go to Azure portal. When you open Azure portal, you would land on this page. On the top, we'll have to search virtual machines. Click on create. Then you'll see these many options. We have to choose Azure virtual machines here. I have my subscriptions uh, allotted to me, so I'm going to take one of them. Identity. AVNM. Uh, we'll create this in West India region. WI. AVNM. Demo. AV. NM. This is a virtual machine name. AVNM. Demo. AVNM. Uh, WI. Demo. VM. India. West India. No infrastructure redundancy required. So I'll select no here. And here Ubuntu. B1S is the your subscription doesn't support virtual machine creation in West India. Ah, so catch. Let's move out to another region. I was suspicious about this earlier as well because West India region has limited infrastructure. So let's do SI South India. Okay, so India. B1S password. Adding my shared password here. Connectivity SSH. Going to select the lowest, the cost effective HDD. And click next. Then on the networking page, we'll have to select your networking name, network name. Then the range, we we'll want to choose a range. 24. Let me figure out if I'm, let me make sure that I'm not using this range anywhere. Address space. I'm using 10.000 slash 24. Should be fine. So no use this. So 10.100 slash 24. I'm going to name this as SMS1. Is the IP address in this range or in the CID? You are getting 256 addresses. I want the smaller one, so we'll choose 25. So we'll have half of them. No load balancer not required. Delete public IP and nick when VM is deleted is a good option. None of them is useful now. I'm going to disable story account as well because this is a test VM. Go to next. Next. Done. OK, now one thing we need to check. We will be adding a tag here. Test so that my VNet will get automatically. Add it. Let's review the detail.
So you can see I have specified uh, tags at the virtual machine, but it is applying on the associated resources as well. So we should be fine here. Click create. It will take some time. Five minutes maybe. Okay, there we go. So go to resource. You see uh, South India region. Your resource group you specified name, uh, its size, the public IP. I'm, I will have to connect to this public IP through SSH. And then IP address, private IP address. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, what the machines? Maybe an M. And right now, I have four virtual machines located in multiple regions. Let's go and connect to this machine. By showing name IP address as here. Wait, this great name SSH. I want to have it. The US SI, this one. Best I mean. OK. Name space by your user password. Clear this. And now you're connected to the fourth machine. OK, uh, if you want to ping the existing virtual machine, you can check. No connectivity to spoke one. No connectivity to spoke to. And no connectivity to hub. OK, now that uh, the fourth machine is ready, let's see the mesh configuration topology. Let's go to our AVNM back. We will remove this earlier configuration because we want to add a mesh topology. I'm going to remove this. After was this is removed. Because when we deploy something, uh, the earlier configuration was getting removed, right? When we deploy something, the earlier uh, configuration was getting removed, right? Yeah, we have option to override it. No? When you create a new uh, configuration, you always have option whether or whether not to include the earlier one. Oh, OK. Now let's check the configuration is removed and we should no longer be able to connect to the existing host. So ping to my hub. Uh, 
And no connection there as well. So you have removed configuration and connectivity is disconnected. Now let's go and create a new connectivity configuration. Connectivity config. Establish 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 So before I go into connectivity, let me put the diagram and show you how we are going to connect. So I have added a new machine here. Now, in mesh configuration, what happens? You connect all of your hosts to each other. Okay, this one is connected to this, this connected to this, this connected to this. This one need to connect to this. This is connected to hub. This one is connected to this. This one connected to this. Okay. So now all host, we need to get all the host to be connected to the each other. Right? And there is no hub and spoke now. This is a this is a mesh complete mesh. Click on mesh. Enable this feature that is global mesh. This will uh, provide you the connectivity across the region. Since we have uh, regional virtual networks, we need to enable. Uh, we need to click on this feature. Okay. Let's go to network groups. Select the network group. Okay. There's a catch here. We still have two group members. Ideally, it should be three. Have a look at that. This is our virtual VM and virtual network. Tags. Now test tag. Tab one. There can also be an interval of policy execution. You can see creating a your policy definition may take up to 24 hours. It may take time to come that uh, virtual network here. Uh, meanwhile, just get this hub added manually. If this was our hub. Now it is into mesh. Okay, these three networks are there and they are they do not have any connection in between. 
they cannot communicate to each uh, they cannot uh, communicate to each other we have seen that from the uh, session this is session and uh, there should be one more which will dynamically appear here to policy now let's go back to our work of manager configuration again create connectivity configuration connectivity connection establish establish login global mesh i see it here now four members are added i mean uh, that's that's like uh, ridiculous when you want to check but there and when we do the configuration it appears there so let's go back to the working method manager uh network groups We see all your our, all of our four members are here. Policies. And you see the additional one, right? So dynamic addition of virtual network is also working fine. And now we select this network group here. We do not have direct connectivity or regional connectivity option here because we are uh, working on the mail, which is another uh, way means they directly connecting to each other okay now that we have the configuration click on configuration and hit deploy deploy means commit committing your changes target region india we have central south and then australia east there is no existing configuration and hence it is adding new one and there are four regions central india south india australia east the states while we are deploying the configuration why do we need to choose a, a region because the vnets are already in those regions right correct so why do we need to choose the regions while deploying the configuration your configuration has a scope on what scope you want to deploy your configuration and hence you would require configuration to select the scope uh what happens if i miss one uh, region suppose australia what happens then let's check okay so i am going to create or let me see if i can edit i'm going to remove this connect to the establish to it to all units all space type mesh topology and our global mesh and our Work group
Good. Select the uh, configuration and click on. Now region, India. I will not select this center. I will select central and south this time and forget about US because we've seen that part earlier. So only three regions are selected. Australia is Central India, South India. US host IP is uh, Uh, 172 the first one in our console let's check the connectivity first name this is our us first okay so let's check the connectivity from us host ping to my other spoke this is not ringable then my virtual network which was become up earlier dot zero dot zero dot four this is also not thinkable the new host thing n dot one dot zero dot four this one is also not thinkable. so basically when you do not add your scope would not be able to reach to those networks and this one is already added in our school ping pin dot zero dot zero dot four successful this is also successful right and traffic from the other side Successful. Uh, if we ping the US uh, host from here, that will also not work. That will not also not work. Yes. Right. This is the new one. And host uh, US host is one seventy two sixteen dot zero. Right. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So that's it. We saw how to connect to each uh, single host uh, residing in different regions, right? Uh, in the mesh connectivity. So we were in, let's go to the diagram. We were able to connect. We basically created a mesh topology, which would look like this. There was one change. This new uh, the earlier host of course here, here east us this was not in the communication because we in the scope we did not add but we were able to communicate between these three even the newly added one so we were able to establish mesh connectivity now till now we have seen virtual network manager how to configure virtual network manager how to add your virtual network or how to configure virtual network with the virtual machine then how to add network group to your virtual network manager define static membership define dynamic membership using azure policy create hub and scope configuration with uh, hub and scope with uh, direct connectivity and create mesh configuration and we also saw how to apply security admin rules. Okay. So one more thing I wanted to tell you. The mesh. You see in the mesh virtual machines interface. Working. Out.
in route you can see only connected group this time and not that we need pairing uh, address because when you connect your uh, spoke directly or when you have direct connectivity to all the hosts you have a, a connected group construct created and published on a, a, your interfaces so 10.1.0 is for your newly created vnet 10.0.0 is your old hub address Here also you have new address and one of the spoke address. And also on the last machine also. You should see that published. Route. Ten dot zero dot zero slash twenty four one ninety two one six eight zero zero twenty. Okay, and here there should be nothing because we did not publish it. There is no address published on this interface. OK. And if you check the VNet pairing, even the VNet pairing would not exist because this is direct connectivity. Pairing. There is no pairing. 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 Okay. Right. So basically, in mesh topology, you will have connected group published on network, not the pairing. Okay. So now we have seen. So far, we have seen how to connect AVNM, how to add network group, how to make existing virtual networks or members of those group, how to add new virtual network with the tag and automatically make a member of the group. Then create connectivity configuration with hub and spoke, hub and spoke with direct connectivity, and lastly, mesh, mesh topology. Okay. Now the, the final one is how to do this using PowerShell. OK, so let's go back and remove the one that we have created. There must be a policy. Go to assignment. 
should have these policies on the web. Create assignment. Create assignments. There are others as well. Let me quickly remove them. We are removed the assignment. I will need to remove the policy. Okay, they are all removed. Uh, our uh, AV and image has been removed. USRG is not found. Okay, seems like it's removed. Okay, let's go back and create a new Azure Virtual Network Manager using PowerShell. So I'm going to do this using Cloud Shell. You can you open Cloud Shell as by typing shell dot Azure dot com. If you are doing this from your local system, you will first need to install this module az.network with the specified version and also need to import that module. Okay. And third, you will have to connect to your Azure account before uh, running those commands. Mm, now that I'm using the cloud shell, I will be running from here. I have to first set the subscription. So, Adding this command. This will uh, make the sub this subscription as a default for provision. Let me show you. You can see the connectivity subscription link is a default now. Okay, so let's go and create the RG resource group. Okay. 
in first line it is specifying the location and the second it is creating a array variable wherein it is specifying name location all the resource group and in the last line the command to execute the resource group creation i should see this resource group in my resource group section Go. Connect it is operation right now. No resources. Let's go ahead and create resources. So first we need to set the scope. I have added uh, one subscription scope. So we have to copy this. And this is for access type. Create access. These are all options we have seen when we were trying from a web portal. And then you set the scope. I have to select till this because I am not including management. Then uh, machine. And I'm uh, sorry, the uh, Azure Virtual Network Manager. The name for my Azure Virtual Network Manager. Then resource group name, which we created. Network Manager scope, the scope, which is the subscription. And Network uh, Manager scope access. What all feature you need to add? Security and connectivity and location. Seems like my network manager is created. I'm going to my resource group and refresh. Yeah, let's add it. Then add group. Add the network group, a created network group to my idea version of manager. This is basically add, uh, adding a group or creating a new group. The name would be my network group, and uh, resource group name is rg dot name. And network manager dot name is specified here, which was uh, created earlier. And then in the last. Uh, Command or last line we have specified to create a network manager group. So copy it, it is here. Member type, supply values for the following parameter. Says member type is missing. Let's check what uh, what that parameter means. Member type is blank. Okay, necessary to put the member type. Let's try again. Okay, looks like it is not taking empty member type.
Let's specify the number type. Okay. They have shown us they, have, they are creating without member type mentioning in the command, but it is not taking it. The null value. So, okay, but uh, I think we need to modify this command. Let me see how, how I can modify. Uh, but we were able to create the new Azure virtual, uh, Azure virtual network manager using PowerShell. The only thing we uh, only thing is coming uh, that is adding a network group. I'll uh, correct this and send you guys a new script. The connectivity, we would need to add the connectivity, but this would not work because network group is not created without network group. Connectivity will not work. So let me see uh, at the script, uh, modify it and send you guys. Uh, what if we copy it from the Microsoft Docs and edit according to our uh input i'm sure it is from there only and you are what you're going to talk about now version yeah it looks like one day there only. Network group, see it here. They did not specify any number type. They have specified name, research group name, network manager name, and there is no member. We'll have to figure out how we can proceed with the member type because we do not see member type examples. But we are able to create a virtual network manager group. You can see that here. Okay, so I think uh, I'm ready to wrap up this session. Next stage is clean up resources. You will basically have to search your resource group names and clean up the entire resource group. So delete resource group, provide resource group name. I also want to delete these VMs, but I'm not going to do it, do it immediately. So for now, I will only stop it. The cost for running the virtual machine will not occur. Okay. So that's it. And next is question and answers. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I can read in the chat. 
Khadija had asked one question. Check. So there is first question. Can you please explain how Ben spoke and English? Let's go to go to this diagram. I'll save this diagram for you guys. So this is my network, virtual network. Okay, this can be located. Uh, uh, there is no specific format for them to uh, be located. Format decides their connectivity. Okay, how they are connected to each other. So we have these one, two, three, four, five virtual networks. Inside this virtual network, we have a virtual machine. Multiple virtual machines. Okay. Now this virtual these virtual networks are connected to each other. I'm showing you the hub and spoke. So they are connected to this middle one. It's fine. Oh, it's wrong. Okay, so this virtual network is connected to this one. This one is connected to this one. This one is connected to this one, and this one is connected to this one. So all the virtual networks are connected to one single virtual network. And that single virtual network is called hub. When we use this hub and spoke, you have suppose domain controller lying in this virtual network. You have suppose file share uh, lying in this domain, uh, this virtual network. In order to make a use of those services, you will need your end virtual networks to connect to one central virtual network and it will become a and spoke. OK, this is an example of hub and spoke. Now, the other topology that is mesh. And in mesh, there is no centralized virtual network. Every virtual network will be treated as a, a similar to other one. This one is connected to this one. This one is connected to this one. And this one will be connected to this one. And this one will be connected to this one. Okay, so one single network. One single network can connect to other single network or multiple networks at the same time and vice versa. That is mesh. You are creating a mesh uh, network between your virtual network. 
and yeah, in your mesh there is no some uh, there is no uh, main virtual network that you can define the uh, one thing uh, one uh, major difference is if you want to communicate to other host other spoke in hub and spoke you will need to have a routing device here at your home uh, at your hub so that it will traffic it will route the traffic uh, begin from this host to other host but in mesh since you have direct connectivity you don't need to have any device or third party application so that's it about hub and spoke and mesh topology Second question is about pass. Uh, Sumita will, the Chaitali will answer. Pass, Chaitali, the scope always refers to subscription. No, scope can also refer to management group. You can also add management group at the top level and add your subscriptions into it. Okay, I think I have answered all the questions. Uh, and I'm ready to wrap up this session. Etali, over to you. Okay, I think she's not there. All right, let me know, guys, if you have any question, else we can end this session here. Uh, Shamsa, I'm there, I'm there. Okay. Yeah. So, guys, uh, if you have any doubts or question, you can put it in the chat box or you can ask it up front. So, he can answer to your questions. If any doubt to anyone, please go ahead and ask your questions. Or else we are about to wind up the session.